We start in deep space as a ship called the Pillar of Autumn floats through the cosmos toward a totally random and giant ring thing. Inside the bridge, some handsome silver fox type fella called Captain Keys can't understand how they haven't been able to lose the homicidal race of space aliens who are hot on their tail and who keep trying to do all these bad things, even though they just totally made a blind jump through slip space. But a sensible female voice swiftly reminds him that the Covenant vessels have always been faster than crappy human ships and that these alien fellas who they seem to be at war with were waiting for them on the other side of the planet and in 90 seconds they're going to be all over them like crabs on a pube. So naturally, Captain Keys puts the ship on full alert and tells all his lazy crew to stop slacking off and get to their stations pronto. The UNSC soldiers then get whooped into line by an unnamed chocolate fella who seems to be the core leader and who looks suspiciously like Sergeant Johnson from the later Halo games. But anyway, he gives the lads an inspiring motivational speech as the female voice warns over the tannoy that they're re-engaging the enemy and are only moments away from being boarded. So stop fiddling with yourselves and pick up a proper weapon, boys. Meanwhile, down in the cryo bay, the technicians get a message from Top Brass to unseal the hushed casket and so proceed to thaw out a giant cyborg fella fellow what sees everything in the first person. Then the captain asks to see said cyborg chap up on the bridge ASAP, so the tech boy what just woke him up heads to the door and tells his buddy Sab up in the control room to get to his evac group pronto, but because this NPC just gave another NPC a name in the script, it sure doesn't bode well for poor Sam. And sure enough, just moments later, the poor fella may as well be wearing a red shirt, because much like my parcel deliveries, he gets instantly dispatched by illegal aliens. <coughs> then the tech boy goes and gets himself blown up by recklessly running around an exploding ship. And before you can say, these people have less common sense than those fellas out of idiocracy, the poor bloke what just woke up and is still probably half asleep is left to fend for himself without even having a weapon to shoot things with. Anyway, shortly after, we see this thawed out cyborg fellow in his full greeny glory and turns out his name is the Master Chief, who speaks with a cool gravelly tone and has a shinier helmet than 11 year old me post circumcision. <laughs> anyway, but then we're introduced to a super sexy virtual bird called Cortana, who is some sort of AI construct and certainly not the first digital girl to give me a raging lob on. Suddenly though, an explosion rocks the ship and some random bridge tech reports that the main battle cannon is offline and so they're now out of options. So naturally, Captain Keys totally cucks and tells everyone to get the heck out of Dodge because this boat's going down faster than Rita Ora's draws and the main priority is to get the super sexy AI lass off the ship so she doesn't fall into alien hands or into bored laps of horny UNSC marines who ain't seen a woman in months. So Keys instructs the chief to stick that saucy bird in his noggin and get off the ship already. Cause if the enemy captures her, they'll learn all about the human strategic plans and also all of his passwords to his Spotify and Netflix accounts. Oh, and the location of Earth, I suppose. Anyway, after his 2A rights are restored and he's finally handed a shooter to defend himself with, Chief hauls ass to a lifeboat and they soon leave the Ultimate ship with a randomly generated name before one anxious marine asks the chief to confirm that they will totally survive this last minute evacuation to a random alien ring planet. And after hilariously ignoring his plea for reassurance and just tapping his quivering shoulder like a right patronising git, the lifeboat enters the ring's atmosphere and the chief refuses to sit down, instead insisted on riding out the trip standing up because he's a total badass and stuff. So after the pilot fails in a one friggin job and totally doesn't land the pod safely, Turns out everyone who was strapped securely in their seats seemed to have totally died and the only geezer recklessly standing up during the whole turbulent flight and also on impact is somehow still alive and without even having taken a hit to his shields. And I guess the answer to that anxious fella's question earlier was really no, you're totally not going to make it son. But anyway, exiting the crashed lifeboat and walking through the bodies of their friends and colleagues littered all around them, Cortana says that everyone's a total goner and that we should get going because there's not really anything we can do. And before he can say, shouldn't we at least try some CPR? Suddenly, a giant enemy dropship appears and that yapping lass in his head keeps stating the bleeding obvious, namely that they need to keep out of sight so they don't get spotted and shot to death. 
Chief then links up with various groups of stranded survivors, and some sassy lady called Echo 419 drops off a warthog from a pelican. Whilst I proceed to get triggered with flashbacks, cause the last time I saw a warthog come out of a pelican I got banned from visiting the NIH and told to never accidentally wander into Anthony Fauci's secret underground lab ever again. Achoo, anyway. Echo 419 aka Fauhammer says she'll totally stay on station to come pick up the survivors once they're done cleaning out all the aliens and stuff. The chief then enters a tunnel and a super sexy virtual bird once again states the bleeding obvious by pointing out that this metal cave with futuristic emergency lighting is probably not a natural formation. Cortana also says that she hacked into the Covenant's battle network and that these numpties are actually broadcasting tactical data on unencrypted channels. Which is hilarious because my mate Dave did that once and promptly got dishonourably discharged from the military for doing TikTok live streams from his army barracks. But anyway, after saving some more cannon fodder, I mean totally loyal UNSC marines, Cortana discovers that although Captain Keys is still alive, he's only gone and got himself captured by the baddies so now we have to hot tail it out to some random spot in the desert to go save his doddery ass. Apparently, he's being held on a giant battle cruiser called the Truth and Reconciliation. And Cortana says that once they get in there, she can lock onto the captain's location via his neural implants. <laughs> See, I knew they would be doing this nonsense in the future. Yet they all laughed and called me a conspiracy theorist when I said Bill Gates and Elon Musk want to put chips in our brain to track us 24-7. Well, rather like people at an Amy Schumer gig and also my current YouTube audience, they ain't laughing now. But anyway, the heroes soon come across a massive grav lift, which is the only way up to the spaceship they need to get into. So naturally, Cortana states the friggin' obvious yet again by telling us that we need to secure the loading zone and use the lift to enter the floating ship in the sky. So rather like the end result of that BJ what I got off that dollar store hooker behind the little bins last week, lots of little soldiers get sucked up into a dark abyss and our heroes soon arrive inside the enemy ship where they eventually rescue that dopey captain who got himself captured like a right mogadon. He soon tells us how he overheard the alien fellas talking about how this ring world is called Halo and they believe it to be a super weapon of unimaginable power. Cortana then intercepts comms implying Covenant forces are looking for a control room to activate said super weapon of unimaginable power. Naturally, Keys can't be having that because he hates losing and potentially being killed by a super weapon of unimaginable power. So promptly issues a new mission to his team to go and beat those alien bozos to the control room at all costs wherever the frig it is. But unfortunately, Echo 419 can't extract them this time because she's too busy painting her nails and also getting shot up by the enemy. So they're left high and dry and having to find their own ride home now she can't do her one frigging job either. Suddenly, one marine has a panic attack like a right millennial melt and reckons... Oh man, we're trapped in here! We're screwed! We're screwed, man! Till his skipper tells him to quit his belly aching and remember that he's with the legendary Captain Keys. Ah oh yes, a man who keeps letting his ship get destroyed and allowing himself to be captured by the enemy all the time. But he soon redeems himself by hijacking a Covenant dropship. But turns out flying a giant purple magnet thing is harder than it looks. And he instantly crashes it into a bleeding pillar like a riot wally. Eventually they make it out and head down to a small island on the ring looking for the map room that leads to the control room. Echo 419 aka Fauxhammer also redeems herself after slacking off earlier and leaving them all to almost get killed by a captain who can't fly alien magnet ships to save his friggin' life, because she Amazon primes them another warthog with same day delivery. Result! After fighting his way down to the cartographer's entrance, Cortana desperately warns the chief to not let them lock the doors. Naturally, the Covenant proceed to do exactly that, because plot hurdle, bro. So, after he too fails at his one frigging job, the Chief has to find some other room on the other side of the island in order to disable the security system. Which he eventually does, and then has to totally backtrack until he can now get through the unlocked doors and finally enter the main shaft. And man... I haven't seen a shaft that big since that time I accidentally overdosed on Viagra and had to go warn my granddad that I think he must have my thyroid tablets. And unfortunately, he's likely going to have a rather disappointing evening with grandma tonight. 
Achoo. Anyway, Chief eventually finds the map room and they head on over to the control room. But this faux hammer bird gets all confused because the coordinates of said control room appear to be underground. And she was always taught during flight school that you have to actually be in the sky to fly around and preferably not 200 feet under the earth. So after scaring the utter ungoy out of a little grunty chap and making him slime his pants, Chief takes out the various hostile forces and soon reaches the control room for the super weapon of unimaginable power. Chief then uploads a super sexy virtual bird into the system, who soon seems super overwhelmed by the huge data dump she experiences and can barely contain her digital orgasm at the sheer amount of knowledge and information she now has access to, and then confirms the origin of all this to be Forerunner, whatever that means. But her excitement soon turns to despair when she realises that the Covenant fellas found something horrifying buried in the ring. And I can totally relate. Last time I found something horrifying buried in a ring, I simply walked back out of that gay orgy I stumbled into and promptly turned off the lights with a quick apology. Bruh. But anyway... Cortana warns that they have to stop Captain Keys at all costs, cause turns out the weapons cache he's off looking for isn't what he thinks it is, and she sends the chief off into a dark and creepy jungle, which is so dark and creepy it's even making the horrible ugly aliens run away in fear. Eventually, Chief comes across a crazy marine who's more scared and confused than Joe Biden at the end of one of his own speeches, and this mental fella soon starts shooting at him, screaming about how he's not going to be turned into quote, one of those things. And before you can say, do you mean an elite kitty sniffer with dodgy dealings in Ukraine? Chief smacks him upside the head and straight up murders a young chap with mental health issues. Gah, what a hero! Later, he's hearing whispers and jumping at things what aren't there. Probably after all the guilt of bashing in that random chap's brains rather than getting him some mental health support. Before he gets jumped by a dead body when forcing entrance to a mysteriously locked door. Reviewing the recording of the now deceased Private Jenkins helmet cam, the doomed soldier recalls how their team arrived in the jungle and also didn't like old rock music, before further showing us how they entered the installation and found horrifically mutilated bodies of badass alien elite units. And before you can say, that's a bigger warning sign than that big warning sign I crashed into last month, Captain Keys arrives and they all enter that super locked room that every horror trope in existence tells you you probably don't want to be going in, son. So naturally, they ignore said tropes and egregious warning signs and soon get attacked by strange alien bug fiends what proceed to munch up the entire team before the cam recording ominously cuts to black. So after witnessing the darkest diary entry since Ashley Biden recounted her morning showers as a kid, Chief makes his way topside and runs into the monitor of Installation 04, aka 343 Guilty Spark. Seriously, who names these bleeding things? Apparently, this fella's turned up because someone has totally gone and released a race of alien killer cannibals called the Flood, and he also has one job, which is to prevent them from leaving the installation. And my guess is he's going to totally fail at that too, if the rest of these characters' previous track records is anything to go by. But he needs the Chief's help to do it, and swiftly abducts his green ass into thin air via teleportation. After retrieving a MacGuffin thing called the Index from the emptiest most book barren library since Joey Essex allegedly had one installed in his house to look smart, Bruh. the monitor teleports him away again, but this time back to the control room, where Chief inserts the Index into the console thing like a key to activate the Halo Ring, aka the super weapon of unimaginable power. But weirdly, nothing happens, before Cortana suddenly pops up looking angrier than my wife, when she has to tell me to put the toilet seat down for the 500th time. This bird then goes full space Karen, because apparently she's had to watch helplessly as this Master Chief fella and his guilty boyfriend go gallivanting around the ring to retrieve an item that'll end up slaughtering them all like a common hog. Cause turns out the only way to kill the flood things is to starve them to death. And since they only eat living creatures, the halo ring is designed to wipe out all sentient life in the galaxy. No way! Well, I guess most politicians are safe. Apparently though, these Forerunner fellas did this exact thing millennia ago, and as a reclaimer, the Monitor expects the Green Human dude to totally do it again without hesitancy. And he just can't believe this living fleshy thing doesn't really want to activate a super weapon that is designed to destroy all living fleshy things in the cosmos. 
So naturally, 343 Spilty Gark totally turns on them and orders his sentinel goons to kill him and retrieve the Index. But the Master Chief can't be asked to die today, so he promptly destroys all the floating machiney things and also wrecks three phase pulse generators whilst he's at it. In order to stall the monitor and ensure he can't activate Halo even without the Index key thingy. <laughs> Keeping up yet? So Cortana taps into the monitor's teleportation grid, though takes a moment to specifically note that teleporting is super dangerous, and thus conveniently being able to avoid gaping plot holes by advising that they only try this once. Luckily, Cortana has now been able to locate Captain Keys, who's only gone and got himself captured yet again. Seriously, how did this dopey fella ever make the rank of Captain? And despite Cortana dropping him on his head, just like I did to my now autistic cousin as a baby, the chief eventually finds the captain. But alas, not before he was turned into a giant alien cocoony pus bag. Also luckily, and like most employees nowadays, he's always wanted to punch his boss and get away with it. So chief happily smashes his face in and gets the hair cut of Dodge. <laughs> Later, Chief flies over to the Pillar of Autumn's desert crash site, where they plan to blow up the ship's fusion engines in order to destroy the Halo superweapon of unimaginable power. But unfortunately, 343 Cycloptic Fart has beaten them to it, and it's having some sort of cyber orgasm tapping into the systems and feasting on all of human history, since them Forerunner fellas previously destroyed everything in the galaxy and left him with Ethel to do for millions of years. Naturally, as monitor for Installation 04, he refuses to let them destroy his oval outpost, what he has sole responsibility for, especially now he's still reading up on how far mankind has come after all these years, and also having now discovered box sets, and totally needs another few decades to get through all 35 seasons of The Simpsons and Big Bang Theory, so he stops the self-destruct sequence and heads out to take the core offline. So Chief says, oh sod this for a game of soldiers, I'm just going to crack one of the engine shields manually and blow it up the old fashioned way. With a boatload of grenades and stuff. Naturally, Cortana gets a raging lady boner and says, my hero. So he shoves her back on his helmet. Steady. And heads on down to the engine room, where he proceeds to detonate the ship's fusion reactors by blowing it up real good and proper. Whilst presumably... Cortana queefs in his head. LOL! Once the engine goes critical though, they then have five minutes to get the air out of Dodge. So naturally, they find a random warthog and drive through waves of enemies out to the extraction point. But because she's a woman and keeps trying to do her makeup whilst piloting a giant space plane, Echo Faux Hammer Team crashes the only pelican that could have got them off world. And it looks like it's curtains for the super tall cyborgy dude and his super sexy virtual bird living literally rent free in his head all this time. But luckily, she finds one final longsword fighter still docked in Launch Bay 7. And so they hottail it over there and manage to get off the planet just in the nick of time leaving those bloody fellas and a few poor Covenant saps to get scorched by 100 million degree heat. Which, in my experience, is just one degree cooler than eating a Carolina Reaper. Bruh. But anyway, the ring finally explodes, and after the dust literally settles, Cortana gets all defensive when she confirms that they're all that's left, and every other poor sod on the ring is now brown bread. But they totally did what they had to do, bro. Chief then says, oh, calm down love, I wasn't judging or nothing. And then sits down to have a little rest after having saved the galaxy from a giant ring weapon of unimaginable power. And after a moment of reflection, Cortana says, well at least that's all finished with now. But Chief is sure to set up the sequel to his own game. And ominously says that on the contrary, he thinks they're just getting started. And before she can say, you're right bro. And actually, I reckon it'll go on for another 22 years at least, and also become a hot video game franchise for most of that time, before devolving into an unmitigated mess under the stewardship of a studio that was specifically set up to take on the mantle, before aptly failing at doing its one job of preventing the Halo IP from falling into disrepute and general irrelevancy. And we then pan out to space, and just before Chief takes his helmet off, we totally fade to black. In a bigger tease than that time that they promised to make a multi-million dollar Halo TV show and ended up being total trash and featured a dopey ass helmetless Master Chief shagging a Draco Malfoy cosplayer because reasons. But anyway, that's it. That's the story. 
Though my favourite part was a secret legendary ending where the phony fakey Sergeant Johnson fella gets it on with a giant slimy alien in the last few moments of life. Which just goes to show that you shouldn't take the end of the world to move away from hate and start loving your enemies. So naturally, I'm off to bum a Nazi now. And also kill two birds with one stone by ticking it off my bucket list. But anyway, that's the plot on the Jalot. Considering that bell thing so you don't miss any future recaps. Including the roast of Halo 2. And probably all the rest of them if I'm around long enough and haven't been cancelled harder than a B-list superhero merely pointing out the factual corruption of a big pharma company. Bruh. Say hello in the comments if you have time. And I'll see you in the next one.